Basically what you want to do here, you're taking small wire with micro waspy stretch tubing. At least, yeah. Once you get it inside, you want to spin the tubing onto the wire. <coughs> Only hold out about a quarter of an inch at the most. And spin the tubing onto the, onto the wire. It'll be easier for you this way. And when you start out, you do it in smaller pieces. Maybe two to two to three inches. Now, what this tubing and wire does is gives you the uh, translucency to the fly. And what is this for again? I'm sorry. This is uh, my caddis pattern. It's called electric uh, JC's electric caddis. It's basically uh, underbody of thread with this wrapped over it. <laughs> And then for your legs and shell back, uh, it's ostrich curl. Burned on the top and then clear cured goo put over that. And are, you, are you using small or extra small usually wire? Small. Extra small I use with the hairline tubing, which is smaller diameter than the, than the waspy. Okay. Now what I tie on first here is a piece of Antron yarn. For like a 14 or a 16, just split your, split the yarn in half. And that's about all you need. All this is for is for the claspers, which would be the tail on this fly. I start my thread about a hook, about an eye width behind the hook eye, and I'll stop it right here, just a little bit in front of the point of the hook. I'll put my Antron yarn on the top, a little bit sticking off the, toward the front. And then just wrap this, keeping the Antron yarn on top, halfway around the bend of the hook. And then return your thread back to the starting point. What are you all out of, did you say? Bait? Next, I'll take that remaining Antron oh, in the front, ones. bend that back, and put your thread over top of that. And next, I cut this parallel with the hook shank. This will give me a little bit of a taper. I cut your Antron to like so, and then just cover that with thread. <clears throat> There's no fiber sticking out. Proceed to return your thread back just in front of that Antron hump. Next step, we attach the wire and tubing uh, combination. What I do, I leave a little bit of wire sticking out and I lash that down first. Now this will be the section where your legs are attached. I cover that with thread. Now I keep my tubing on the side of the hook. Get a couple wraps on that, and I take my tubing and pull it tight. Now, well, I'm, what happened there, I didn't get enough on the wire. So it pulled out. It pulled out. That's why I stick the wire out first, because let me start that over again. I just didn't put enough wraps of thread on it. Okay. <clears throat> you start out. Put your wire in the front section of the fly, in front of the Antron hump. Lash that down pretty tight. Now proceed to tie the tubing down to the side of the hook. A few wraps, then start to pull on the tubing. It'll constrict onto the wire and become thinner. Mm. Bring that all the way down to your stopping point of your thread base. What you want to do, you want to flatten your thread out as much as possible. And proceed to just cover any shiny part that you see in that thread with 
uh, any shiny parts sticking uh, coming through that thread base and cover that all up that's just behind the antron hump and the color you're using on the thread is an olive this is an olive yes this is going to be <laughs> olive over olive this is what you know what uh thread uni thread or something yeah yep this is Edo uni thread or i use benici or i like to use a smaller diameter now we finish the thread off here and now i'll proceed to wrap my body and what i do is pull this tubing tight and proceed to wrap forward just let the tubing roll off of itself but you want to have it real tight at first now, are you leaving the tubing on or are you just leaving the threaded side on? No, no, the tubing is, is, is on. It's The wire is through the tubing. So you're not threading the, 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 it out? Mm -mm. Got it. As you proceed to wrap the wire tubing combination forward, relax a little bit and it will, won't constrict and it'll start to become a little wider, which will give you a taper of your body. Right to where you folded that antron off. Tie that off right there underneath. How are you? No, we don't. We don't have we don't sell like that. Now you'll cut your wire tubing combination off. Uh, and judge the distance from where you stop where you tied off the tubing and wire to your hook eye and clip that there. About uh, about a then take uh, your thread and cover that little piece that's sticking off of there. Two miles. <coughs> two mile, it'll be two miles. And that'll give you a base for your ostrich hurl, which is going to be our legs. Okay, now with the, there's a quill on every piece of ostrich arrow. You want to have that forward toward the uh, hook eye. When you say quill. You see the center? Yes. That's the quill. Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. So that's feathering back, in other words. Yes. Yep. And just cover that and tie off just behind the hook eye with your thread. Just proceed to wrap this forward. <clears throat> now, it doesn't have to be a pretty tie off <clears throat> because you'll see why in the next step. Three wraps behind, three wraps in front. Let's break that off. And you're probably saying, ah, oh, that looks like a mess there right now. Cut your thread, cut the antron in the back. Just make a little set of claspers. And the fly's not finished yet. I make a lighter part of my fly tying kit lightly singe the top. Okay. And that will give you your legs. I would suggest using a Bic lighter. The flame's pretty steady or else you're going to burn the legs right off your fly. <laughs> Don't use a cauterizer either. It doesn't work <laughs> because it'll burn the faster than the flame does. Okay, you got a Sharpie here, a black Sharpie? I'm sure Dave does. <laughs> well, this is a little trick I use so I don't have to change the thread. Now, I'll do, I do this uh, Rikophilia, which I start off with green thread underneath, and then I'll, I'll cut it. After I wrap the body, then I'll cut it and I'll go on with a light olive. And what I do next here, just to make the thread color, I just throw a little bit of with a permanent marker, a little bit of black on top of this, match the color of your ostrich. 
Now that will re reveal some fibers that have not been burned off and then I just hit it one more time. Hmm. Okay, now you'll have a nice smooth back. I'm using the clear cure goo here to do the shell back. And with the marker being wet, it will soak up some of the black ink. Take my bodkin and just, this is your head cement too. And make sure you get a little bit down into the legs. This stuff's good because it'll basically, gravity will take care of itself. It'll round off very nicely. Mm -hmm. And then next, hit it with the light for five, ten seconds. Yeah, what's that light for those of us who do a flip tie usually? This is uh, ultraviolet light. And the reason is? It yeah, cures, it cures this epoxy. Ah, got it. You have to, you know, you can take this epoxy out in the sunlight, put it out there, and it'll cure it right away. Do, do you find that that epoxy stays slimy, sort of? It does, a little bit. Now, this is the no tack. Right. Oh, that Brian one. said that it's still a little tacky, so you take it out in the sunlight, direct sunlight, it'll dry it right up. Right. Uh -huh. or, or you could hit it with a little rubbing alcohol on a swat, like a little pad or something. Uh -huh. It'll uh -huh. take all that stuff. Right. Okay. You Great. can do the rubbing just, alcohol, yeah. or right, unlike the tuffle eye, this, if it's tacky, you can just hit it with the hard as nails. Right. And this will be dry in five minutes.